Hello guys, my name is Adam Shadow and today I will show you the theoretically best possible interface for any storage system in Minecraft. This thing in front of me is obviously just a model or a mockup or however you want to call it to, for demonstrating it. The idea is rather simple. You may have thought about chest halls or box display halls or similar machines to get the items from your in storage. However, this is not perfect because you re are required to simply run around and that requires a lot of time. Something like this would be far more ideal, right? Having the blocks just shown to you and being able to select them. This is obviously a dream situation, having creative mode in survival. And we can get pretty close to it. If you remember my first video about the ultimate storage system, I explained there the idea of sending an item to a machine, let's say diorite, to a, let's say a water stream or a dropper line or something like that, and then the thing would just give me a shulker box full of diorite back. The issue with that is the delay. It simply takes way too long, even for one game tick over each hopper to get the items back. There is also some cute concepts of using minecarts for this encoding, but it still takes way too long. However, we already have things, like you might remember, my binary encoders and decoders. These things, they are insanely fast. They can transport signal really far away. And with that, all we need to do is just input the right number. And then we can have a decoder on the other side that will just send us the shulker box of those items we want. The issue with that is Theoretically, you could build uh, just a re really tall encoder and have the player just, I don't know, press levers or something like that and then send the item or rather the signal and then the item back. The issue with that is you don't remember the codes in your head. Like, I don't think anyone can <laughs> remember, like, uh, let's say, 1000 items with 1000 different numbers especially binary numbers assigned to them. So for that, I found a simple solution. First of all, how about we use a bit more normal numbers? Let's say the base of 8. This is already pretty nice because you just need to pass 4 numbers, as you can see here. We have basically 4 columns of 8. And the other advantage is We also can easily encode it by simply having each of these numbers equate to three parts or three parts of the wire. So we would have like eight of these things stacked like this next to each other and with the corresponding binary numbers. But still, this is also a problem. We still can't remember probably 1000 different numbers of whatever base. There's a simple solution for that. You can actually modify the language files in the game. My friend and uh, fellow prototype member GameJab helped me with this. You can do this very easily. You just need the right template. And then you can just modify the name of each item. So let's say. I modify the number for the redstone dust to be 4713. So now all I need to do is I go to the machine, let's say we start, you can start from 1 or from 0, it doesn't matter. So let's say like this is 4, now 1, 7, the stop, 1 is here, and 3 is this. We press all of these, then we would 
Press a button and we would get the shulker box. Obviously, obviously this is like I said just a demonstration. This thing breaks basically everything anyone has ever imagined in storage stack. This is practically instant. You can make this insanely fast. You can use zero takes, you can move blocks with pistons to make this incredibly fast. This causes no lag when stationary. Well, except maybe this dropper here, dispenser. That's the only lag this is causing, which is negligible, completely negligible to any storage hall ever made. All of those things usually require thousands of droppers, hoppers, chests, or whatever shit like that. This doesn't require anything. The only time it causes lag is if you send the signal through these things, when it's a significant portion. But even then you can cheese by having it as some sort of a gate. I would, for example, move some blocks in front of these. And when you press the buttons, this will, for example, close like this so you can send signal through. That way you can then have just a wire going from this to the storage, a single wire, like I showed in the USS first video, USS number one, where I demonstrated something like this concept for the bulk itself. So yeah, this is it. No lag, instant access time. There's literally nothing you can improve on this. No storage hall can ever match this sort of efficiency. Because those are mainly the two ways you quantify storage halls. First is the average access time for the items you want. It's basically the time it takes you to get what you want. And then you also have lag. This thing has almost instant access time, no lag. If you want to build this, go ahead. All you need to do is an encoded bulk storage. Or rather, just a bulk storage, you can literally just have a pile of droppers, since in 1.17 droppers are so low lag, because they, how to say it, significantly improve the lag caused by tile entities, especially when there are no pistons around them moving blocks. So you can just use an insanely dumb dropper storage with some filters, use an interface like this with the encoders and decoders, and you have basically the best storage imaginable. Yeah, so the reason why this is not a USS video, <laughs> but rather a demonstration of a concept, is because many people don't like this idea. For some reason, people oftentimes bring a lot of emotions and feelings and stuff like that into something that's purely about mathematics and basically engineering, <laughs> you could probably call it. And there is also a slight disadvantage. This thing has no intermediate storage, so basically you also have to load the bulk storage somehow when you are doing the requests, which is slight annoyance. The problem with that can be to make it instant, to load your storage instantly. However, in 1.17 you can just use portal loading. There are so called permanent portal loaders that you can use to just permanently load the storage, as long as it doesn't cause much lag, which, like I said, is in these newer versions really easy to do. You're you can avoid even that. So yeah, I'm not building this on Prototech. Feel free to do this, guys. I think this is probably all for this video. Thank you guys all for watching. Please like and subscribe. And have a nice day.